Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. <clears throat> and this is Real True Street Crime. I want to sit down and tell y'all a little story today. Because that's what I do, I tell stories. I want to tell y'all how powerful a case number and having a lawyer is. When, you, when a lawyer gets your case number, he can look everything up about that case. Who was the informant? Everything about the case, like when Demetrius was told and found out through the grapevine, however he did, that his girlfriend had went to the grand jury and was finna get him indicted. Understand this, so I want to give y'all a real story. When you go into documents and you go into real shit and you got lawyers, big money lawyers. Now, it was a couple brothers on the east side. One of them name was Reg. And the other one name was Jeezy. This is a true story. As they say, this is real, true street crime. And I'm just telling you how having a lawyer and when a nigga reads your jacket and how this shit really works so y'all have a real understanding instead of going to Hollywood and thinking that shit they telling you on the TV in Hollywood is really how it works. And that's not how it really works. So let me explain this to you. The mob used to get a nigga busted to see if he would stand up. The mob used to get a nigga busted and see if a nigga would stand up. And if you wouldn't stand up, they would whack your ass. And if you did, you was in. That's how they used to put niggas in the mob. They used to test you. They used to get you busted and see what you gonna talk and what was you gonna do. And if you was gonna talk, you already know you wasn't going to be talking no more. But let me go into the Ridge and Jeezy story, but I had to throw that in there for you. Now, they're the best of friends, Ridge and Jeezy. Both of them grew up on b from my understanding what Red said. Red said he had a Mexican connect out of Mexico, out of Mexican town, and they was moving the crowd, bro. He had a real plug. I'm talking about a serious plug Reg had. But Reg had one problem. He couldn't move shit. Jeezy is the man who could move it in his crew. Jeezy and the niggas he was fucking with. So Reg go to Jeezy and say, Jeezy, I got this spot. I, got, I ain't got a spot, but I got to connect. He had a spot, but Jeezy couldn't move it. Reg couldn't move it. So he go to Jeezy and try to work a deal with Jeezy, trying to middleman the deal, and he didn't know how to middleman the deal. So Reds fucked around and took Jeezy to the connect. Jeezy played Reds. Him and Reds to the con went to the connect. They got a sample of the dope, and Jeezy told him it was garbage. Man, this shit is total fucking garbage. That's what he said when Reds was there. And he said that in front of the Mexican. Then Reg got in his car. Jeezy got in his car and left. Both of them left. When Reg hit the freeway, it's only one thing. Jeezy swung back around and went back to the Mexican's house and bought the shit. Told him I was just doing that to get rid of Reg. He stole the plug just like that. He told Reg the shit that the dope was garbage in front of the Mexican. And as soon as Reg left, Jeezy went right back and got the dope because the dope was classic. And you know the Mexican was saying in his fucking mind, what the fuck is these things? Jeezy swung right back around and stole the connect, man. Now, Reg is mad to the motherfucker when he find out what Jeezy done did. Jeezy is riding a half a million dollars worth of cars. He got the new Mercedes drop top. He got the new BMW drop top. He got the 400, uh, the 600 Mercedes photo bins. Jeezy had a half million dollars worth of cars, man. Jeezy took the plug and is clowning. Red is watching Jeezy ride all around in all these cars. Red is riding a big ass Ford flare wheel, one of them big ass Ford trucks that had the flare wheels. And Red, sort of like Nicky Bonds, was getting fuming. How in the fuck this nigga gonna steal my plug, don't give me shit, riding all these motherfucking cars, and the nigga stole the plug just like I told y'all. 
So Reds really, like Nicky Bonds, wanted to get back at Jeezy. So, however the shit went, because Reds was getting dope from the Mexicans too, but he wasn't moving it as fast as Jeezy was. Jeezy was moving the motherfucking crowd. Jeezy got a half a million dollars worth of motherfucking cars, and Red just got one of them Cadillac uh, station wagons when they first came out in a Ford F-150 truck. Red might have had $100,000 worth of cars all together, and I just told you, Jeezy riding a half a million dollars worth of cars, and Red is all fucked up. So somehow, Red got busted. Reds got busted. Somehow, Reds got busted. Now, after Reds got busted, he worked a deal with the police to turn informant on Jeezy. Understand this. Reds done got busted. He turns informant on Jeezy. Now, he done told the feds everything. Jeezy this, Jeezy said everything. He setting Jeezy up and then turned informant on Jeezy. Understand this. Now, Jeezy had one of them badass lawyers like Steve Fishman, Camille's Pitts, one of them. Jeezy had a badass lawyer. And Jeezy lawyer got the motherfucking file. And when Jeezy lawyer got the motherfucking file after he got indicted, see, Jeezy got indicted. And they was finna motherfucking give Jeezy life on that 848 charge I talk about. So now, Jesus then got indicted and finna get life. He fighting the 848. And God damn it, his lawyer come back and say, uh, do you know this guy named Reggie Harlem? He said, who? Reggie Harlem. That's who was informing against you. Reggie Harlem is who informing against you, Jesus. That's who got you all fucked up. Reggie Harlem. Jeezy, Reggie is down on Harlem playing motherfucking cars, got me. Jeezy riding around the block. Somehow, Reds at some point left out of the game and went somewhere else, but he left his truck at the game. Jeezy go riding around, riding around. In fact, stopped and asked me and William Harmon, have y'all seen Reds? Yeah, we saw Reds a little while ago. His truck down there, he gambling. Jeezy go down there, at that point, Reds wasn't there. But Jeezy knew his truck was there, so he knew Reds was coming back. Now, Jeezy's lawyer then told him Reds is the informant on his case. Jeezy had a big money motherfucking lawyer, and his big money lawyer told him, this motherfucker here is finna get you life in penitentiary, Reggie Harlem. Jeezy was fuming. He said, what? He rolled up on me and went, do y'all know Reggie? He knew we knew Reggie. Where Reggie at is really the question. Have y'all seen Reggie is what he asked. He told him, you know, his truck right out there. You seen it. You know his truck. You know his truck out there. Man, at some point, Reggie got back. Jeezy walked up to the door where Reggie was at. Another brother by the name of Mike was working the door. So Mike looked outside the door. Reggie is sitting at the table gambling right now, playing cards gambling. And Mike say, it's this guy, Cheesy. And Red say, that's my nigga, let him in. That's what Red said. Mike went to the door. He, they said, who at the door? He said, Jeezy. And Red say, that's my nigga, let him in. Mike opened the door. Let Jeezy in. Red is sitting at the card table playing cards with four, five other motherfuckers. Understand what I'm telling you, and this is a true story. Red is sitting at the table playing cards with four, five, maybe six, seven, eight motherfuckers. Jeezy walked in. He looked red. Right? in his motherfucking eyes. Now he just said, Mike just let him in the door. He said, let Jeezy in. He's my man. Jeezy walked in the door. Red is sitting at the table playing cards. Jeezy walk up and look Red in the eye just like this. 
him and Reg. Jeezy is staring him in the eye. Just like this. Him and Reg. Jeezy is staring him in the eye just like this. And Jeezy pull out a 45 and knock Reg out the goddamn chair. Killed him right there looking him in his motherfucking eyes. Ask any motherfucker if you think this story ain't true. He walked in the house. He walked, he looked red in the eye just like this. He pulled out his 45 and he killed Reg. He knocked him right out the chair. He fell backwards. And everybody at the motherfucking table was a witness like, God damn, man. And the reason he killed that man is because he had a big money lawyer. He knew he was snitching on him. See, so when you got a big money lawyer and he gets your motherfucking file, which is what I'm telling y'all, he can dissect everything about him. Everything. And the first thing he going to find out is who is the motherfucking informant. And when he find that out, you better hope one or two motherfucking things. He is either off the streets because if he ain't, and let me finish this story. Jeezy killed Reg. It was on Fox 2 News. This is another story that I'm telling you that was on Fox 2 News. Look it up for yourself. Reggie Harlow, like the Globe Trotter. In fact, he was kin to the Globe Trotter that was named Harlem. That was his family. He told me that himself. How else would I know if Reggie didn't tell me he was kin to the Harlem Globe Trotter that was named Reggie, whatever it was? So I'm telling you this. After Jeezy killed Reg, it was all over the news. They played it, showed his picture, everything. But let me tell you something. He killed Reg just like I'm telling you. And Jeezy never did a day. The police looked for that man the rest of his life. And from what I hear, Jeezy died. I know for a fact he never went to jail for killing Reg and killed that nigga just like I'm telling you because he read the file. The FBI don't lie. Them FBI files, take a look at that sometimes. I'm sure they got a show telling you about the FBI files. Understand that. But that's just one off of the east side of motherfucking Detroit City. Understand that off the street, Hardy. They was on a street called Hardy. That's where William Harmon lived over there on Harding and Mac. And right down the street from there is where this story played out at. So I'm telling you, if a nigga gets your files, he gonna read the case and know every motherfucking thing about the case, who told who anything about the case that is documented by the feds and the federal government, he will know. And when he found out Reds was this, the fucking informant against him, nigga, see, but I'm going to tell y'all, if they ever had caught with Jeezy, he possibly could have got the death penalty for doing that shit. Know that. But Jeezy, put him on the list. He was another nigga that did some shit that ran off that never got caught. Jeezy never got caught for his whole life. So I got to put him on that list too. Jeezy did that shit. Knocked Reds down and hid in plain sight all of his life. Jeezy did it right there on Harding and Mac. That's a real story for you. Killed that man was on the news and everything. They looking for him crazy. They played that story on Fox 2 for at least two weeks to a month and still couldn't find Jeezy. So this is real true street crime. Subscribe, share, and thanks. Subscribe, share, and thanks. If, if you and if you one of them rap niggas. The last thing you want is for a nigga to see your motherfucking case in your file. Because the government going to tell it. They going to tell it who the motherfucking informant is. They going to tell it. 